I asked about vehicles in the Philippines. Um, how can I really talk about it? <laughs> Most second-hand vehicles are run into the ground. Uh, there's no other way to put it, because even if you look after it, half the mechanics are diabolical. Um, you will get mechanics damage vehicles on purpose because they want that extra bit of business off you. And if you, even if you go to main dealer, um, I remember a friend of ours brought their new car, just literally come out of the garage and went to our house um, as he was heading back south. And I looked at the back of his car and his tyres are worn on the, the inside, the bearings are out. Um, the tracking was out, sorry, on the, the, on the alignment. Now, bearing in mind, this is literally just left the garage and they hadn't even noticed. Yet I seen it uh, just walking towards his car. That's the quality of standard a lot of the time. Um, did they swap his tires out? I don't know. Um, do I trust people with my car? No. Um, I've had them try to do stuff to me. Uh, the last trip back, there was somebody who removed something from the air conditioning and said, oh, it needed a new part, I'll go and find it, blah, blah, blah. Um, when I got back, I said, just bring it back, just bring it back, put it back on, air conditioning was fine, there was nothing wrong with it. Um, they sheared the bolt off the alternator, how they did that, I don't know, but that's the case of just take it off and get it re-threaded. But a lot of this stuff, if you can do it yourself, do it yourself. Which gets on to another point here. Um, a, you can't trust most mechanics um, because they do it to Filipinos, they do it to anybody. So don't just think it's a foreigner thing, they just do it. They'll rob you blind and give the chance. There are some good ones about, let me know when you find one. <laughs> yeah, I've got one good mechanic, um, but it's took me about 12 to get him. Um, and his was a bit of blackmail actually because his uh, relative worked worked for us. Um, so he didn't want to do a bad job because he knew the reprisals would um, be headaches from other relatives. So that was our good, that is our good mechanic. We've got a good air conditioning guy as well, um, but he takes a couple of weeks to get anything done simply because he's good. So he's busy everywhere, um, which is also another important point. It's worth waiting. Um, if you know somebody's really good, don't get anybody else in, we'll leave them to it, give that task to them, regardless if it's going to take them a month or two months, it's much better to have them do it, because otherwise you're paying for them to undo somebody else's mistakes later on. Do you buy new vehicles? Um, I wouldn't buy a brand new vehicle. Um, the maintenance problems are one of them, because the fact is you can't find reliable staff. Um, it takes time. Uh, and they do damage during that time. Second one is when you try to sell it, you're struggling to get anywhere near what you paid for it. Um, people just, it, the Philippines is a odd market because it's like the building next door that we bought. The guy wanted more than double originally. Um, and we just said no. I, I just said that's what's on offer and just left it. But then something came up where he wanted to sell it as quick as possible, and I got it for what I, for what I paid for it. Um, because if you're interested, and they know you're interested, they'll actually try and get prices more than it's worth. It's just silly. Um, but if you're selling something, and they know you want to sell it and need to sell it, or desperate to sell it, they will go as low as they possibly can. Um, that's just the culture, it's just in the nature. So, what I advise, motorbikes, buy brand new, uh, learn how to service them yourself, because uh, my Kamasaki um, the browser, um, they, even from the manufacturer, had not set the gears up properly. Um, and when I took it back, they, they didn't know how to adjust it. I've actually got to take it somewhere else. I, I managed to do do okay with it for now, um, but now the motorbike's stored away because I'm offshore anyway. But motorbikes buy new because you buy second hand. They are normally knackered. The bits have fallen off within months. They, they've messed around with bearings and all sorts inside that you can't see when you're buying it. 
if a Filipino selling it, they're normally tinkered with it like no tomorrow. But bear in mind, a lot of the mechanics tinker because they're not mechanics. They're uh, because they own a spanner, they're called a mechanic. Um, the quality is dire because um, the good mechanics aren't there. It's simple as that. If you're if you're a good engineer, do you think you're working in the Philippines or do you think you're working on some oil rig, oil platform, or in the in a ship uh, going through the world? Because that's where they are. The same with a good electrician, etc. What you've got is an apprentices, apprentices of apprentice. They're, they're like so far down the line. That's why the quality dropped. There's been a brain drain for such a long period of time that they struggle to maintain quality. But also, once people are qualified, they don't seem to have that drive to improve. Don't know why. Uh, I don't understand it. Um, I mean, I know when I did my locksmith course, it was a weekend course. I didn't come out and say, right, that's me. I can do everything now. It was the starting point. It wasn't the end point. I then started learning about um, different types of locks. I learned, I learned how electronic locks, uh, security bollards, all sorts. But that comes from understanding that you need to improve your knowledge because they've given you the basics. They've given you the tools for what you should be looking for. But now you need to understand how different things work. And that's where some of this is a problem because that knowledge doesn't get enhanced. And obviously, a lot of the time, they haven't got access to that knowledge. Um, you know, internet's for Facebook. It's not for learning. <laughs> well, this is why new motorbike, because you can run it for a couple of years without doing much to it, and you can sell it. Um, you don't get as much as you pay for it, but... Personally, I'm going to keep my Kawasaki Rouser until there's nothing left of it now. Um, it's a good bike. It's not been messed around with. Um, I've had an old yellow scooter that I bought second hand for I think about 13,000 pesos. The engine has been rebuilt at least three times. The crank's been replaced. There's been so much work to it. Electrics rewired, all sorts. And it's still broke now. Um, it doesn't need much to get it going because it's one of the best uh, 50 cc engines around but it's had some abuse you know and not by, <laughs> by the people that had it before me so second hand things are normally tinkered around with messed around with and that's just too much hassle you know you're going to spend more repairing and bringing it up to spec than you would have been to buy a new one don't buy chinese another thing Chinese stuff generally seems to rust very quickly, and also I find with it the build quality is poor. Uh, things start falling apart. Um, I remember a two-year-old scooter I got off uh, a, fill um, a friend of mine. By the time, by because uh, I took his payments over on that one, that was quite a funny one because he only had so much to pay. It wasn't a lot, so I thought, well, I'll take the payments over. But in the end, I told him to just come and take the scooter because it just kept falling apart i mean the uh the covers fell off the um the battery went and it, it was just bits and pieces of falling apart on the thing um but he'd already paid most of it it was only like the last six months or the last nine months left on it so if it stayed working i would have been quids in but it just fell apart i mean it literally did that's why i ended up getting the kamasaki uh, rouser in the end but it was, I think it was only like 1,500 uh, pesos a month um, for the last six months. But I told him they're coming back. He's like, yeah, but there's hardly anything left to pay on it. It's like, yeah, I don't want it. <laughs> it's just going to be junk blocking up my uh, uh, parking space. It was terrible. Um, one of the main issues I had with it was when I would get to somewhere that had been riding for like 20 minutes or something. Something got in it and got hot. So then it wouldn't start. So you couldn't come back. You'd have to wait an hour before the thing would start again, um, which is the main reason they went. It's just like, I'm not interested. Just get rid of it. It's supposed to be uh, to make my life easier and not more difficult. So that was typical Chinese quality um, scooter. Do not touch them. Uh, Japanese ones, rock solid. Like I said, that little yellow one I've got, if it hadn't been tinkered with by that 101 electricians and mechanics and whoever else had messed around with it before I got it, it would be in fantastic condition because that engine is rock solid. Uh, it's one of the best two strokes. So 
the uh, the point being, buy new if it's a motorbike, if it's a car, buy second hand. The reason I buy second hand is a there's not a lot to cars. B most of them are cut and shut in the Philippines, unless you're buying brand spanking new, which I wouldn't touch with a barge pole because they're too expensive. Because um, the insurance is a bit of a pain. Because a lot of the time, if you had a crash, they will just add it to your insurance for the following year. So it defeats the point of having the insurance. So I would say go with something reliable. A lot of people buy these multi cabs. Although I had one myself, don't recommend them. They fold up like cardboard in a crash. Um, the big 4x4s, the one, like the one I've got, are brilliant. Um, they're not cheap. They, you know, when you think of it as a second-hand car and there's already £5,000 being put into it. Um, but the reason I got that was the school run. It's built like a tank. Um, the kids are protected if it was ever in a collision. It's got the ball bars all around, etc. Um, it's air conditioned, it's got a 3 litre uh, turbo engine, so it goes quick. Uh, and although we had an engine problem, we actually had the whole engine rebuilt for about $1,000. Um, and the reason I broke is the way I drive it, and it wasn't actually, you know, I'm sure if I treated it like the age it was, it would have been fine. It's just that I did hammer the turbo a bit and they didn't like it. So, but those I rate, the Pajeros, the bigger stuff, I rate, and you'll see the mares and everything use them. Even even the older vehicles, they're still using them because they're reliable, they're robust, they'll, they'll survive a crash. Um, they've got the two, two and four wheel drive, which in flood conditions can get you out of a lot of trouble. That's why they use them. Um, can't say it more, I wouldn't bother with a new little car, I would actually go for something a bit hefty. Um, Mainly for safety, but also if it's well maintained, but well serviced, not easy to do. Um, don't run forever. Go for the diesel. Go for something like the uh, two or three liter engines, and you're you quids in good vehicles. Um, but I wouldn't buy one no, Not in the Philippines. People damage cars in car parks. Um, they can't drive. A lot of people could just cannot drive. And it, I'll tell you now, if you don't believe me. Go and, go and grab a can of coke or something and just stand around in the car park, uh, you know, like watching from a balcony or something. It won't take you long to see people that are bumping into people's cars and stuff because they cannot drive. Same in Spain, you know, where I am at the moment. The amount of cars that are damaged must be about 70%. Um, people bump park. Somebody smashed my rear light the other day outside the kids' school. That's going to cost me 40 quid to replace it. But if it was a new Mercedes or something, it wouldn't be 40 quid, it would be 240. So take those things into account as well. All right, thanks for watching.